Monday it is, and always we bring you everything that you would have expected over the weekend. And it's only packaged here on Sports Today on the Joy Sports Channel on Multi TV. Well, we will start off with boxing, where one big name here on the local scene in Ghana, Brian Makamoko, known better as Bukombanko in the boxing ring, has been talking very, very tough. He's been talking a range of issues from family through to his career and how he wants to hit the international scene. Well, remember that in the last few weeks as well, one a contender has been uh, putting a challenge to him. His name is Ayite Powers, and he is currently domiciled in Australia. Bukum Banku says now he is ready to take whatever terms his challenger brings so he can let him shut up once and for all. Send a text message as we get ready to uh, listen to the man Bukum Banku. Obviously, uh, his manager is also very, very firm behind him, but his manager is um, not being too um, flexible with the terms. He says that uh, the boxer will take advantage of the situation if he's given flexible terms for the fight, because of which he will not budge and will still maintain, um, you know, a winner-takes-all, you, know, uh, you know, condition for the fight, meaning that uh, the winner of that bout, if it comes off, will take everything, um, take the full purse, and uh, the, the loser will not get anything. So you can send in your thoughts ahead of time. 1760 is the text code. We also uh, bring you uh, news from the camp of the Black Stars. And, of course, uh, many Black Stars players all over the world are trying to make it and trying to make the headlines as well. We'll also be taking you into what's happening in golf, uh, golf development here in Ghana as well as the Osu Homawa Marathon. Yes, we'll be showing you how many people have been, you know, uh, trying to outdo each other when it comes to the marathon. Gradually, marathons are becoming uh, one big feature, uh, you know, on the sporting calendar. Also, we'll be bringing you uh, highlights from the Tour of Spain. The cycling Tour of Spain is also here. We also bring you some uh, UEFA Champions League fixtures as well as... Um, you know, the Belgian Grand Prix in Formula One, where Sebastian Vettel was the man to watch out for at the weekend. Uh, we'll be telling you about all of that right here on the show. It's Sports Today and is on the Joy Sports channel on Multi TV. So, uh, Brian Makamoko Bukum Bankun, the man, is getting ready to take on the rest of the world. He says that he is ready now to take on the rest of the world after building a very, very solid record at home in Ghana. Remember that the boxer is yet to stage a fight outside of Ghana and he says that now he's ready uh, he's been a victim of uh, you know big opponents chickening out at the last minute as well and uh, he's had his fair share of it uh, talk about the likes of Nathan Cleverly who've all walked away from Bukum Banku so you send a text message as we get into the details of the show very shortly I'll be taking you into what's happening in uh, the sports newspapers today on Monday uh, August 26 so We'll get into the newspapers in a bit, but right now, you stay right there. We do a round of commercials, and we get into the details. This is Sports Today. Well, former Black Stars captain uh, Stephen Appiah is said to be making a return to Accra Hearts of Oak as he uh, rounds up his career. Um, this is a story on the front page of the graphic sports newspaper. There we are. So, um, another story there is Muntari out, Kevin Dede in. Big question. Ghana's uh, squad to face Zambia. Uh, the graphic sports uh, has what could be Ghana's squad to face uh, Zambia. And, of course, Apia is ready to return to hearts. Remember that uh, Stephen Apia you know, had a failed uh, move to Persepolis in Iran, one of the biggest clubs in Iran, recently. And now is said to be on his way to Accra Hearts of Oak. Rooney can leave Manchester United, but... Okay, Caroline Wozniacki is featured on the uh, Lifestyle page. It's on page 5. So let's quickly get there. But before page 5... Now, there's an official, officiating official in Taekwondo, and um, he is uh, officiating at the World Cup. And, uh, well, he doesn't go unnoticed. Frederick Otulate, he is um, an official at the World Taekwondo Tournament, 
and that surely is a big feather in his cap. There he is sitting across as one bout goes on. Frederick Otulate, obviously very, very professional indeed, earning such a, an important place when it comes to world taekwondo. So while the football referees are struggling to make it, Frederick Otulate has been able to make it in taekwondo. And of course, we don't have an option but to celebrate Frederick Otulate. Let's get into some more stories in the Graphic Sports newspaper. On the Lifestyle page, there is um, Caroline Wozniacki. There she is, a tennis star, and uh, she is featured here, a picture of her mansion. And, of course, enjoying her Porsche, a customized one indeed. Obviously, you'd want to kill to get her on the front page of a magazine as well. Caroline Wozniacki there. The brand icon for Rolex as well. That surely brings in a lot of cash, if you ask me. So that's uh, the lifestyle page. Also, we get into scenes from Europe. These are the stills of action from Europe. And... Um, of course, we'll be bringing you the Bundesliga action, the rap, where the man, Frank Ribéry, scored um, a very brilliant header to seal it for Bayern Munich. So those are scenes from the European leagues there in the graphic sports newspaper. And now the Secondi Stadium is set to be crumbling. There we are. And uh, these are very, very worrying scenes from our stadia. Moses Dutia Klobotu writes this one. And uh, there are major, major structural issues at the Secondi Stadium. Remember, Joy Sports had earlier brought you a story about how the facilities were deteriorating at the Second D Stadium. Well, another one there, and it's very, very unfortunate. Remember, this stadium was constructed or reconstructed for the um, 2008 edition of the Africa Cup of Nations. Now, there we are. On the interview page, it is the man. Emmanuel Game Boy Tego, he says he's ready for a world title. Okay, so Emmanuel Tego ready to take on the rest of the world. Also, we do uh, what's on the back page of the Graphic Sports newspaper. And uh, there we are, that main story. Stephen Appea ready to join Hearts of Oak. And uh, this story was called from the web page of Accra Hearts of Oak. And of course, a story about Kevin Prince Boating. And Dede earning a place ahead of Suli Ali Montari in the Black Stars is also there. All right, so there we are. So that's it for the graphic sports newspaper. We also get into what's on the 90 Minutes newspaper. And it says, I'll die for Ghana, according to Andre de Diaiu. And um, there it is. Uh, he says that he is going to die for Ghana. Well, after that long back and forth, There we are. And of course, Andre Ayu was voted the man of the match as um, Marseille beat Valenciennes. And of course, Lucas Podolski at the double by Munich beating Nuremberg. And uh, a shirtless Frank Ribéry will surely celebrate with his friends course, Valbuena giving Andre de Diaiu a hug after a great performance. And of course, Iron Robin getting better with time. And of course, AC Milan losing out in that game. Rather disappointing loss 
indeed. And of course, uh, here is um, a duo. And the duo, guess where they're from? They are from Arsenal. There we are. The duo coming from Arsenal. Emmanuel Frempong and Lukas Podolski. Emmanuel Frempong also recently earned a debut call-up for the Black Stars team. And now we go to the um, Ghana Sports newspaper. It says, SEN blasts judges and Muntari and Jordan dropped despite apologies. Okay, and also it has um, a wrap of the top Ghanaian performers in the um, leagues outside of Ghana. So there we are. Madrid to adore 86 million pound Gareth Bale tomorrow. And there it is. Clearly he has um, outpriced the man Cristiano Ronaldo. And that surely is going to spark a big reaction. If everything should go through successfully, definitely there's going to be a big reaction. So these are the guys. Kevin Prince Watting, Andre Didier, you featured there in a pullout in the Ghana Sports newspaper. These two lads surely have dominated the headlines in the last few months, especially with um, issues concerning playing for the Black Stars team. Let's also get into what's in the Sports Filler newspaper. Sports Filler, um, Target Terror, uh, Rooney to face Chelsea. Okay, so there we are, Wayne Rooney, and uh, that's a big clash that's going to happen later today as Chelsea, as Chelsea face um, Manchester United. This fixture coming very, very early, very, very early in the day. And also on the back page, there is that very big one. That is um, some statistics. So there are the guys. Patrice Evra there. And of course, the man Wayne Rooney is on the extreme left corner of your screen. Let's see how well they are able to do. Remember, it is 1760. 1760, it is. Uh, you can send in a text message as we get into the details of the show. Remember, the boxer Bukum Banko, he says that he is ready to take on the rest of the world as uh, we get closer and closer to him. And of course, uh, Bukum Banko, he was a guest on last Saturday's edition of the Joy Sports Link, where he had many thoughts uh, concerning his career. And also, that man who will not go away verbally, the man Aite Powers, who has continuously thrown a challenge to Bukum Banko for a local grudge fight. Is that fight going to come on? That's one very big one. Let's go for the excerpts of that interview. Banku, have you dealt with this eye thing once and for all? Have you, have you dealt with it? Have you gotten it out of the way? Have you sought medical help to clear that? Me, I don't have any problem at all. If somebody has the eye problem, any time when I'm going to fight, you come and watch. Nobody can beat me. When I fight, I see you. And you tell me that I have a, I don't have a problem. I have the medical. It's not, it's, not, it's not only about the regular seeing, but, you know, there, there are issues. We're all human beings, and maybe deep within you, something may be happening. Uh, you, know, you don't know the Ghanaians. I don't have any problem. Me, if my manager do fight for me, I'm going to fight. Right now, we prepare to go and fight the world title, light heavy, for China. I'm prepared. Oh, I want to kill Aite Powers before I go. You, you want to kill him? Oh, I don't want to fight Aite Powers. Aite Powers is not the correct boss. Any ratings, no day anywhere. IBF, WBA, WBC, WBO. Aite Powers is not the rating boss. It's a genuine man. Anytime we beat him to pay him, one day, one day, you get a problem for your head. I know that anytime I go to fight, I'm, pre I'm prepared, I'm training hard. Because people know me that I'm a good boss. I no lose, no draw. Any time win. Oh, I want to stop IT power. If somebody there, Ghana, he believe IT power. Come and bet. If he say you are money, come and bet. What 
we, we like we not take all. If you are eater boys, can no upset we not take all. We don't fight. I see. Yeah. Listen, no, on the, on, on on the, okay, Banco, on the local scene, which boxer has given you your toughest test? The toughest fight you had oh, here on the local scene? I'm forgetting the name, man. It's from uh, WPBF uh, Titi. Yes. I'm forgetting from. Oh. I, I'll get you the name. I'll get you. The, the, the fight was held at the Accra Sports Stadium, correct? Yes. yes. And um, you, you, you say that that was your biggest, your, your biggest challenge? I, I swear. From Argentina, I believe. Argentina, yeah. yeah. I see. Why, why would you say that it was your toughest fight? What, what exactly happened in that fight? Uh, it's a former world, uh, world champion. Okay. But give me the tough time. It's, uh, it's my best fight and my toughest fight. I see. But I hate the boys, he's not a man. Or if you say he go fight Buku Banku, me, me, my, all my wife are loving them. All your wives, you love all of them? Yeah. How many wives do you have? I have three wives. Three wives? Yes, it gives me luck. It gives you luck? Yeah, because... How, how come? How is that possible? Oh, it's no big problem for me. And you have a lot of children as well. How many children do you have? Eleven. Eleven? Yeah. I'm a man. Do you, do you look after all of them? Yeah. My manager you, you, support me. He supports well. you to pay. But yeah. you, you is, they are your children. They are not his children. Uh, it's my father. I want, he can help me anytime. I see. So, yes. so he helps you to pay the school fees. He pay. He pays all of for all of them. Eleven children. Yes. Mr. Spain, you you pay school fees for eleven. My partner who runs the school, uh, Mr. Okai, okay. and Mr. Okai also assists. Okay. So it's a shared responsibility between me, Mr. Okai, and. Uh, my tete, that see. we see that uh, we really had to relieve him from some of these burdens of responsibilities. I see. For him to be focused in training, and it, it's been well. Hey, but you know, people make a lot. You know, basket mouth. Oh, I'll do, I'll do comment, but I don't like it. It's not my feed. The only person I like. But you are acting as well. You're on TV yes. now. Oh, I know. I know that everything. I know everything. I know acting, music. I'm a, I'm a good jovial, but it's not my feed. You are, you are a good jovial. What is the meaning of that? I'm a good jovial. If you are joking, you, you laugh. I see. Yes. But you don't want to do that? Nah, no, it's not my field. It's not your field? No. Nah, so if you stop field. boxing, what will you do? If you oh. retire from boxing, what would you do? Coach. Boxing coach. You train boxers? Uh, I'll train some small, small boys. Small, small boys. Have you started doing that already? No, because I don't stop boxing. <laughs> I'm sure that you're already smiling or laughing already. But, well, you can send in a text message, 1760. Bukom Banku says that he wants to become a boxing trainer when he retires from the sport. Also, he says that he is ready on any day to make sure that that bout between him and um, Aiti Powers comes off. So uh, send your thoughts on this one. And remember that we're bringing you full excerpts of that interview on tomorrow's edition of Sports Night with Kwame Jumo Ajiman. Let's go ahead and we've been also talking to his manager, uh, Henry Ekomandi Spain, who was there with him in the studio last Saturday about the boxer's prospects and how uh, easy it will be or how far away it is for the boxer to get a big world title shot. Oh, we... We, we, we decided to do the fight. We did have some talks with him, making him known that uh, this is how we're going to go. On Agu FM, I think he, he really accepted the, the deal that it's going to be winner takes all. I know him, so of course I'm not surprised of his attitude now. He's just running away from the man. I saw something in Banco that nobody saw. And I continue to see what many people are now realizing to see. The guy is a child. Looking at the four strong bodies, the WBC, the WBA, WBO, and the uh, IBF. IBF. Yeah. I do not see anyone there who really can beat this guy here. I see. Trust me. I do not see no one at all. That is why we had to uh, having that difficulty in the in the uh, uh, light heavyweight, we really had to climb up because no one is coming up. People real, realizing the the, uh, the power of, of this guy just quickly walks away. We've had a situation where um, Shimnov, okay, the, the, I think the WBA um, champion, yeah, champion, 
we requested to fight him. He agreed on the fight and everything. And then he requested to see Banku's tape. Honestly, we sent him the tape. And when he saw the ferocity of the guy, he just called us and said, look, I'm not fighting this guy. He's too brutal. I see. And then he, he just walked away. So many attempts had been made, but they keep running. You realize what happened uh, some months, uh, some years ago, uh, roughly about getting to two years now, uh, with uh, Nathan Cleverly. Yeah. Yeah, the fight was ready. It was sanctioned by the WBO. We were ready to go. We were getting ourselves really, really, really prepared. And then eventually they brought in the issue of Banku's eye problem. And actually that is how they were able to escape the, uh, the bout. This this thing this every day we're talking. Banku has an eyebrow. He looks at me. He's he's looking at me. He's fine on the outside. What what were they raising? What issue were they raising then? Well, when you are scared of someone, you try to formulate stories. So any little thing, you take advantage of it and say, look, because this is the problem of this man. That's why I'm not going to be fighting this guy. But the truth and the matter is, they are scared. Okay, okay, so you have heard it. Send in the text messages 1760. Let's share and let's get talking about Bukumbanku and the, um, the, you know, the prospects of, you know, becoming a world champion. Uh, we'll be doing some more boxing later on. I will be, uh, you know, talking issues with Mike Tyson. And uh, remember, Mike Tyson at the weekend, he uh, debuted as a promoter and also was making, um, you know, some very startling revelations about how he is dying and, uh, you know, wants to rescue himself from alcohol abuse. Uh, a great name indeed in boxing, but surely the backstories have not been the most pleasant. Let's now look at uh, some football where uh, Newcastle are said to be, uh, you know, watching uh, Andre Ayew, who had a very good game at the weekend for Olympic Marseille. And uh, now Newcastle United sent their director of football, Joe Kina to watch Ghana winger Andre Ayew in action for Olympic Marseille on Saturday ahead of a proposed move. So, of course, big clubs in uh, the UK are also looking forward to signing Andre Dede Ayew. But will he get out of uh, France? Very, very big question indeed. So let's also get into some more stories with Ghanaian players Christian Achu and uh, le there's still a lot of talk about Tottenham Hotspurs grabbing Christian Achu who uh, seems to have uh, rounded up his uh, time at um, FC Porto. Is it cool? Christian Achu there, and uh, he is um, also a subject of a lot of talk between FC Porto and um, FC Porto and uh, Tottenham Hotspur. Let's see how it goes for Tottenham Hotspur. Let's also get into what's happening in Birmingham City, and a player, Akwesi Asante, uh, is also. Um, Looking forward to a uh, longer relationship with uh, Birmingham City in um, England. And uh, Akwesi Asante, another Ghanaian player in the news there. So we continue to do some more here. And um, Kwejua Samoa, and uh, he uh, is seeing a lot of full-time action in the Italian Serie A. And I uh, remember that. Uh, Juventus, they got some very good, uh, got a good result at the weekend in the Italian Serie A. And uh, that was a, a slim win over Sampdoria at the weekend. And of course, Kweja Samoa now a very key part of um,
Kujasam are clearly a very big part of um, the Juventus setup now. So a very slim win for Juventus at the weekend, but uh, obviously good form being shown by Kwejo Asama, who's currently the swag sports personality of the year. Won that award at the last edition of the event that was held at the Banquet Hall of the State House in Accra. We will continue with some more stories on Ghanaian players. And uh, Isaac Kofi says that his dream to play, uh, says that he is dreaming of playing consistently for Genoa uh, this season. So um, Isaac Kofi, remember that he plays his football in Italy, and he is looking forward to playing uh, full-time. Now, Kofi rejoined Genoa after an impressive campaign with Kievo Verona last season. And the 21-year-old wants to replicate last season's form at the... Uh, Red Blues, who finished uh, 17th in the league last term. And Genoa will see their opening, uh, will open their Serie A campaign on Sunday with an away match. Uh, they open their, you know, their uh, campaign away uh, with uh, Okay, so we also focus on uh, the uh, player, Asamoah Jan, who is back at training at our Ayn. Now, Black Stars captain Asamoah Jan, remember that he's a two-time goal king uh, at our Ayn, and he may have joined the preseason training camp late, but the Ghanaian striker insists he, had, he and the rest of his teammates are working very hard to return to fitness. Now, Asamoah Jan could earn, end up one of the biggest legends in uh, football in the Gulf from the pace at which he's going. So that's uh, Asamoah Jan getting ready for uh, pre-season action. And let's now also get into uh, what's happening with uh, Richard Kingston. Remember that Richard Kingston, uh, a very, very consistent goalie for the Black Stars team. He has uh, also returned to club action. And uh, re remember that he uh, finds his way to Cyprus now. Uh, he had stints in the English Premier League, and now he is on his way to uh, playing in the uh, Cypriot side. And of course, after a three year absence, Cyprus provides home for Richard Kingston. And it surely is going to be very interesting to see how competitive the goalkeeping department will be for the Black Stars as. Um, we get more and more options because if Richard Kingston is able to get uh, more playing time, then obviously he could get uh, a, 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 a return to the Black Stars team. Remember that player Ofosu Apia here on the local scene played in the Ghana Premier League for some years? Well, Ofosu Apia, whom many like to call um, Tiko Tiko, uh, the Ghana defender, has uh, joined uh, Latvian Giants Konto FC. The former Santi Kotoko player arrived in Latvia last week to sign a two-year contract with uh, the team. So Ofosuapia is now there in Latvia. Well, a rather unorthodox destination, if you'd uh, say, when it comes to football. Let's uh, do some more and... Um, there are two players uh, who are now on the move. I'm talking about uh, Bafo and Abu Bakar. Uh, bring you details now. So there we are, the Ghanaian duo of Mumuni Abu Bakar and Emmanuel Bafo on the verge of leaving South African uh, side Mamelodi Sundowns for moves in Belgium and Switzerland, respectively. Remember that Emmanuel Bafo, um, the former goal king in the Ghana Premier League, has not necessarily been able to get good playing time there 
at the uh, South African side, Mamelodi Sundowns, who recently had a uh, training tour of Ghana. And so he goes away to look for uh, some action in Switzerland. So while he goes over to uh, Switzerland, Mumuni Abouaka finds his way to Belgium. So there we have the news as well. Stephen Appiah, ex-Black Stars captain, is now relishing a move to Accra Hearts of Oak. Now, Accra Hearts of Oak is where Stephen Appiah managed to get his, you know, uh, his uh, big foundations in uh, club football. Now, the former Hearts of Oak midfielder and ex-Black Stars captain, he has hinted that he could return to his mother club to, you know, call it a wrap for, you know, um, the... The very, very colorful career, Stephen Appiah uh, writing his credentials in a big way when he qualified Ghana as the first captain to qualify uh, Ghana for the very first uh, World Cup appearance in Germany in 2006. Eventually, he was also part of the team that went to uh, South Africa in 2010, yet to win a Nations Cup, but always admired and revered for his inspirational leadership one brand which surely is associated with him. So there we are, Stephen Appiah, making a return to Accra Hearts of Oak. Well, you send in some text messages in a bit. I'll be sharing some uh, more text messages, uh, some text messages with you. So you send them in. 1760 uh, is a text code. It only costs you 30 Ghana pesos. Now, players of Asante Kotoko, they are demanding... Um, new salaries and uh, reviews of their existing uh, salaries. So uh, players of Asante Kotoko are reportedly unhappy about uh, the uh, bonuses and salaries they are receiving from management. And I'm sure that this is an issue which uh, will surely be addressed once Once a full board is put in place for the defending Ghana League champions, so it's a matter of um, salaries and winning bonuses being increased. So we also go into small stories with uh, our youngsters. Well, do you remember Moses Oje? Moses Oje played at the uh, last edition of the Under-20 World Cup, uh, wore that 19 jersey. Well, his agent has described as false reports claiming that the promising midfielder is close to signing for Ghana champions Asante Kotoko. So uh, any uh, such story, according to Moses Oje's uh, agent, is not the best and not true. So... Um, we'll also be updating you as we wrap up the uh, transfer season in Europe, uh, the first transfer window for the year in Europe. So um, we'll be bringing you more updates here on the show. So you always have to keep it right here on the Joy Sports channel on Multi TV. Well, there is a consideration to change the name of Chelsea of Brecombe. Remember that uh, Brecombe Chelsea, one uh, club that won the league uh, as they got into the uh, club. And, of course, they have a lot of resemblance with uh, Chelsea of England. And uh, the club now says that they are initiating the process of uh, changing the club's name one more time. Okay, so let's do some more here on Sports Today. And um, Mohamed Polo, the Ghana legend and Accra Hearts of Oak legend, says that he had to sacrifice for um, Hearts of Oak uh, to, or for Ghana to win uh, the African Trophy in 1978. Now, he says that uh, he risked his uh, career and played with an aggravated injury to help the Black Stars win the Africa Cup of Nations in 1978. And, uh, of course, uh, that, that very uh, threatening injury is what eventually emanated in uh, Mohamed Polo calling it quits in his football, a very bad growing injury, uh, you know, which eventually developed 
uh, into something else which did not permit Mohamed Polo to finish his uh, football career uh, well on a high if you may put it that way but whatever be the case Mohamed Polo surely has paid his dues to football here in Ghana and uh, clearly uh, stands out I remember that many football fans who were there at the Accra Sports Stadium on the day when the Hearts of Oak Oldies played as Antikotoko Oldies had many, many rave reviews for the man. Um, many rave reviews for the man, um, Mohamed Polo, on his ball distribution and uh, his uh, capturing of the ball and all the uh, fine skill which he's displayed over the years to, uh, you know, catch uh, the eye of some of the fans. We now go into what is happening in the Ghana League Clubs Association. Uh, executive member of the Ghana Football Association, Lawyer Kwekwe, yeah, has also been talking about developments within the Ghana League Clubs Association and uh, the plan going forward. Well, we'll be bringing to you that, that it's about time um, Ghana played a, a, a bigger or a more prominent role in the um, affairs of uh, Ghana football like he used to do in the past, where the, um, the Gaka vice chairman, for example, was vice chairman of the Ghana Football Association. No, you see, it depends on exactly what Gaka intends for its members and what the FA also intends for its members. The FA's central idea is football. Football organizing of football activities and in that you have other perimeters with Gaka it is solely the welfare of the clubs and in looking at the welfare of the clubs what comes in so for instance you have the GFA organizing the league but Gaka does not organize the league it is its members who are part of the league but they do not organize the league so it is that if the members who are not organizing the league uh, but are under the umbrella of GFE, then what is Gaka required to do? You have uh, noted that in the past, uh, Gaka had certain competitions. Uh, it was vibrant also because at that time, to be a member of Gaka would mean that you were struggling or striving to attain the office of uh, the Ghana Football Association, that is to attain an office there. I'm talking about being a member of the executive committee because that is how, at that time, the statute of GAC, of the, sorry, not GACA, of the Ghana Football Association was. But the statute is not like that anymore. It will be for members if they think that that is how best they can have the interests of the clubs revived to bring that back. But honestly, I believe that. It is not really a feasible idea. It depends on whether your members actually feel your presence or the members think that they are benefiting from the group. It is only that members will be keen to participate. But if rather you want the members to see your group as a stepping stone to achieve a higher alternative, then the members will only use that as a platform. So for instance, somebody will come to Gaka not really interested in Gaka, but he knows that if he comes to Gaka, there's a possibility of him getting to the seat of the executive committee. So he comes, attends one meeting, two meetings, he makes himself known to the clubs, he's elected, then what? <laughs> not, nothing. How does that benefit the club itself, who are members of Gaka? So it is some, like, it is the Congress and some of these things which happens or which comes out of Congress, that you can know where Gaka is supposed to be. Like today, we had a very interesting chat about the social security as well as uh, insurance. See, these are key components which members need to understand. If you are talking about welfare and it is clubs, it permeates across board. The club is just a legal entity, but under the club, we have human beings. The humans, you name them administrators, the technical staff, and then the playing body. Look at a player's lifespan. Look at a technical man's lifespan. And also look at the administrator's lifespan. When you are a young player, at the time that you are in your prime, your responsibilities are limited. But rather, at the time when you have retired, that is when you begin or you assume responsibilities for instance somebody will say that life begins at 40 for the footballer he has already enjoyed his life and it has 40 years that he's now coming to the real world 
and now starting to hustle. How does he go about it? There are certain structures, there are certain measures which he needs to understand, which he needs to be educated on so that he can make a better life or a better future. That is why I'm all for this idea of this insurance and this uh, SNIT. You know, SNIT is a form of insurance, honestly. That is why we have Social Security and National Insurance Trust. It's a form of insurance. But yes, it's more of a pension, and they mentioned that. Group. So it is important that the clubs really understand, because it's, also, it's only when the clubs understand and appreciate it that they are actually doing it for their footballers. So as well as helping nature what they believe in, that they will grow. Let's take it over issues that people make of some of these things. When you go outside, it is very, very basic. You cannot play football. You are, that is why you even need a work permit in England before you can play. Once you have a work permit, you are treated as a worker. So your tax element, your pensions, all those things, the club is supposed to abide by it. Why, why can't we replicate it the same year? Because after all, who is going to lose? It is the player, it is the poor administrator, it is the technical man who is going to suffer. Let me tell you something. As we speak now, the FA, uh, maybe you may have heard it or listen, but the FA has plans of introducing a pension scheme or a transfer sort of for black stars or national uh, players who have retired. Because in their old age, they have nothing. Their stories are very, very pathetic. In Accra, you get the opportunity to see maybe one or two people, so you will think that they are doing well. But if they tell you about what their colleagues are going through in their old age, you will feel sorry for them. And these are national stars. Some players who have once read their peak, and we've all celebrated them. Now they have retired 40 plus, and most of these players are in their 60s. They have no jobs, they have nobody to care them, they have no pension to rely on. So you see a player and they just mention his name. When you speak to some of them, they just tell you that week in and week out, they are just attending funerals. Because some are destitute, some have gone blind, some people have even forgotten about them. So we need some of these things to teach them, encourage them that it is something which will benefit you in your old age. That is if no mishap falls on you. So lawyer Kwekwe here there, uh, you know, raising major, major issues which will surely be talking points, uh, you know, the membership of Galka and what uh, really uh, people are doing in terms of, you know, educating everybody within the football fraternity about what exactly Galka is supposed to be doing for the, for the football fraternity and all the clubs. Uh, now it looks like uh, focus has shifted and that is not going too well. Uh, people get in there, they get positions, and uh, they are no more active within the uh, club's body. I'm sure that this is a topic that surely will continue uh, to be discussed. Now, let us uh, get into what's happened uh, at the weekend uh, with uh, the marathon. Now, um, there was a Homowo marathon here in Accra, and we've got excerpts. Um, for, for you as the traditional chief of this area, what do you make of uh, your area's association with this year's marathon? Yeah, thank you very much. Honestly, I'm quite very, very, very impressed about the association with PZ and then Papaya for what they have really done. In fact, they have actually uh, fulfilled their social responsibility to the community because most corporate organizations are based on Osu soil and uh, it seems they are isolated from the stew. But Papaya and PZ have really shown that once they are making money on our land, they have to give back to their community. And I'm quite, quite, quite impressed about the prizes and all the arrangements that went into it before we had this wonderful uh, uh, event. Would you want to use this platform to um, say a word or two to the people of Osu? Yeah, currently what I would say is first it goes to the corporate organizations. One, for the past years, Osu has been in dispute. So most corporate organizations shy away from 
helping the stew or even helping to develop the community. But I say on authority now that for the past two years, there's no more disputes in the community. Osu stool has been elevated to a paramountcy, and the Minister of Chieftaincy and Traditional Affairs have established a traditional council for us, that is the Osu Traditional Council. I will use this medium to call on all corporate social organizations there. One, if they are in doubt of anything, they should channel all their grievances or their doubts to the Osu Traditional Council, where it will be addressed. And whatever help they have for the community must be channeled through the Traditional Council. Secondly, I'll call on all citizens that, in fact, I'm not happy about what happened because most of the prices went outside my community. I will be very, very grateful if my citizens and my people participate enough so that most of these prices remain in our community. I believe that come next year, we will take the winning prize and almost all the prices. Uh, you just won a washing machine and some cash money. Um, how do you feel? Oh, I feel good. By the grace of God, I come and position again. Are you happy you won this morning? I'm very, very happy. Do you have any message for your people back in Sunyani? My message, that I want to tell my fans to that. I'll, I'll come back to September 22nd. So you should see me again. We've been doing this with uh, Osu Traditional Council for the past three years. Uh, we believe that as a company, we don't only have to offer uh, our consumers quality products, but we also have to be, be concerned with the health of our, our consumers. So anything that promotes good health, we intend to support these things. So what, what's in this for you? Oh, nothing really, nothing much in this. Like I said, we are only trying to support our consumers to stay healthy so that they can live long and then we can also, they can also buy from us, continue to buy from us, as usual. Are you likely to continue uh, sponsoring this yes. event? Like I said, we've been sponsoring for the past three years, and we're going to continue going forward. Tell us why your company continues to sponsor this particular event. Papaya Fast Food Limited, you know, has been in existence for the past 21 years. And it isn't just by mere coincidence that Papaya has reached this far. And... One of the reasons why we read this far, apart from the food that we produce, we supply our customers, is the way we honor our corporate social responsibility obligations. We decided to choose sports as an area that we feel will be more convenient or appropriate because we need to exercise to supplement the food that we eat so that healthy living will be uh, part of our culture. Are you likely to be a part of this event in subsequent years? Yes, we have decided to make this uh, event an, an annual affair. Every year we hope to sponsor this program. Um, how do you feel winning this year's competition? Oh, first of all, I'll give thanks to Almighty God to help me to win this successful race. And secondly, I'll give thanks to God Adoko, who will hold me my hand and train me well. And I'll give thanks to Papa Air Marathon. Are you surprised you won? Yeah, I'm surprised because I, I don't know that I can win this race. So what is the future for you as far as marathon is concerned? Are we likely to see you again? Yeah, I'll, I'll, they will see me again. This, I'm preparing for this mar uh, mirror marathon coming. And I know that God will let me win this mirror marathon. There we are. So everybody looking ahead to the Milo Marathon, and this has been a very good prelude. Remember, you saw Millicent Bwedi, one very prominent figure when it comes to marathon events uh, in the country. She says that she uh, is coming. We should watch out for her. And, of course, the uh, chief of Osu, the paramount chief of the Osu traditional area, is also saying that, look, this is the time for us to uh, win. My people, uh, please uh, get back there and win uh, some of the prizes for me. <laughs> so Millicent Bwedi came all the way from Sunyani to win uh, the uh, 
you know, the trophy. We'll be doing some more stories. Uh, uh, the coach of Zambia continues to play the mind game ahead of that qualifier uh, that is expected to be played on September 6th between Ghana and Zambia. We'll be getting into what exactly he's saying. And, of course, there's not too good news uh, in uh, Malawi because three uh, footballers uh, met their untimely death in a car crash. We'll be talking about that uh, as well. And, of course, there's a rap from England. Uh, we'll tell you what happened in Germany and, of course, what happened in Spain at the weekend. The coach of Zambia, Heve Renard, has now been talking uh, a lot of hot and cold. Uh, one minute he says that his team will beat Ghana. And the other minute he says that, well, it's going to be a very tough encounter. Well, so Hervé Renard, remember, one-time Nations Cup winner with Zambia, says that uh, he could be heavily defeated. And, um, and this is uh, especially if his team doesn't replicate uh, the performances that has been seen so far uh, of Zambia against Ghana. Now, Hervé Renard, remember, used to be the physical trainer of the Black Stars team under the... Uh, under the leadership of uh, coach uh, Claude Dijoua, who uh, was in charge of Ghana during the 2008 edition of the Africa Cup of Nations. Well, Heavy Renard has gone on to win his own Nations Cup as a coach. Well, former Nigeria striker Efan Ekoku says uh, that he is mystified and extremely disappointed by uh, Stephen Keshi's comments towards uh, the coach of Malawi. Remember that uh, the coach of Malawi has been uh, talking about the... Um, a venue switch for the game that the two teams will be playing. And um, this attracted some very, very strong comments from Coach Stephen Keshi. And this is a controversy that will spark on and on. And of course, um, Coach Tom St. Fate uh, is to report Stephen Keshi to FIFA after the Nigerian coach called him a white dude who should go back to Belgium. The pair have been arguing since Malawi asked FIFA to uh, remove next month's World Cup qualifier from Calaba for safety reasons. Ekoku, who played in the same Nations Cup winning squad as Keshi 94, says that uh, he thinks that, you know, this should stop. He says that uh, it does not shoot. Uh, Keshi does shoot from the hip. Uh, occasionally. Okay, so those are very strong words also coming from his uh, former teammate. And this was an interview granted to the BBC. And also, CAF has confirmed that uh, Egypt will be uh, holding uh, some of the Champions League matches. They will be hosting some of the matches. Remember that Egypt is in the center of some very uh, tough uh, political turmoil. And uh, it will host two Champions League games, and uh, these are games involving Al Ahly and Zamalek. And this will go ahead in Egypt next weekend, despite the continued civil unrest. Now, holders Al Ahly will play AC Leopards in Congo on Saturday at uh, El Guna, followed the next day by Zamalek versus South Africa's Orlando Pirates. The two popular Egyptian clubs are both competing in Group A, whereas Pirates lead um, at the halfway mark with seven points. So there we are. Um, you know, football will still continue despite the fact that there are major, major issues um, there in the country. Now, three players from a club in Malawi, unfortunately, have met their death in a car crash and uh, left three of their teammates also very seriously injured in hospital. The trial played for Malawi Defense Force, MAFCO, and they were on their way home after uh, being punished by the team for indiscipline during a trip for a cup match. The tragedy came 24 hours of Mafco, after Mafco lost on penalties to another army side, Moyal Barracks, in the Carlsberg Cup. So defenders uh, Chifuni Rufiri, Gift uh, Mponde, and uh, Sadan Mangwere all died on the spot, while Gift Soko, Cyrus Firi, and uh, Jimmy Nzunga suffered very serious injuries. Our condolences going out to the Malawian FA for losing these players. Sometimes it surely gets very, very tough in football. Now, uh, Liverpool have um, lined up a loan move for Victor Moses. Remember, Victor Moses uh, playing a very key role in Nigeria's win in the Africa Cup of Nations. Well, um, Liverpool is interested in a deal for Nigerian winger Victor Moses, who is likely to be sent out of Chelsea ahead of um, the arrival of imminent, uh, ar 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 ahead of the imminent arrival of uh, 
William. So, okay, so there we are. Um, these are the results. Um, Cardiff City 3, Manchester City 2. That was a very big shocker. Tottenham Hotspur. Um, they beat Swansea by two, one goal to nil. Arsenal beating Fulham. And, of course, uh, Stoke City beating Crystal Palace. And, of course, uh, Liverpool uh, beating Aston Villa. Liverpool uh, continuing with their win-win song this season. So there it is. Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham, West Ham, Southampton. The two Manchester clubs. Well, Chelsea could make it a nine later today as they play Manchester United. So uh, Newcastle uh, getting an early dip. Well, these uh, are early days yet, so uh, West Bromwich, Albion, Sunderland, Norwich, and um, Everton uh, surely do have a lot of pulling up to do. Let's now get into action in the La Liga and uh, see what happened at the weekend. Uh, Barcelona, they won. And, um All right, so uh, these are other results. Uh, that 5-0 route and uh, Atletico Madrid also seem to be on fire. Uh, of course, they've got the man David Villa in the all-time top scorer for Spain. And, of course, Espanyol beating Valencia by three goals to one. Um, of course, Villarreal beating Valladolid. And, of course, Atletico Bilbao beating Osasuna over there. From the La Liga, we go to the Italian Serie A. Before that, well, this is what it's looking like. And um, Barcelona will take an early lead. Atletico, uh, Athletic Bilbao as well, all there. Okay, so there we are in the La Liga. Well, this is what it's looking like at the bottom as well. Elche, the uh, debutants, Real Betis and Real Valladolid, all there at the bottom. So these are other results for you. And, um, of course, AC Milan, such a shocking loss. Uh, of course, Inter Milan, on the other hand, managed to post one over Genoa. And Lazio beating Udinese by two goals to one. So uh, this is the table. The second half of the table, the first half of the table, actually. And so uh, it's going to take shape very, very soon. So that's the uh, other half, uh, the likes of Livorno, Genoa, Sampdoria, Udinese, AC Milan, not having any points after match day one. There we are. So let's get into uh, some of the uh, results as well. Other results there. Brian Zweig, you saw it. Um, Frankfurt winning 2-0. And of course, a high-scoring game uh, between Bayer Leverkusen and Munchen Gladbach. Six goals, four of them going to Bayer Leverkusen. And of course, TSG Hoffenheim and Freiburg uh, drawing 3-3. Another six-goal thriller. And of course, Borussia Dortmund winning there. I'm waiting to see another game, uh, the league fixture between Borussia Dortmund and uh, Bayern Munich. Surely going to be a very big one indeed. Let's take a look at the table now. And uh, Borussia Dortmund is there, Leverkusen is there, and uh, Bayern Munich is also there. Uh, interesting thing is that Leverkusen and Bayern Munich are on five goals each, and uh, Borussia Dortmund have six. So, uh, uh, really, uh, Coach Pep Guardiola's trouble will not necessarily be winning the games, but how to uh, match up with uh, Jürgen Klopp's record. Second part of the table there, and uh, Branschweig already in trouble. Stuttgart there, Schalke there, Hamburg also there, and Freiburg there. But Branschweig, they surely have to uh, pull their weight in order to get things right. Let's now get into what's happened in the Ligue 1, the French Ligue 1, uh, the table. And uh, also, um, there we are, Lille beating Saint-Étienne. And uh, Marseille going away to Valenciennes to win 1-0. Uh, 
Andre de Diaou being judged the man of the match and Paris Saint-Germain beating Nantes by two goals to one. Gwingam beating Lorient by two goals to nil and Montpellier beating Sochaux by two goals to one. So this is what the table is looking like, Marseille. There at the top, Monaco. The high-spending Monaco are there, seven. And, of course, the rest of the teams. Paris Saint-Germain there. They surely have a lot of catching up to do in these early stages. All right, so uh, Toulouse, Ajaccio, and Lorient, Bastia, all there in the bottom. Okay. Let's now take...